Hi folks, it's Jocelyn. Welcome back to my channel. Today I have a really fun vlog for you. This entire thing sort of came out of Bethany's own brain. If you don't follow her, Beautifully Bookish Bethany is another booktuber and is one of my friends. Both of us also live in New York City and she contacted me a little bit ago asking if I wanted to join her in a sort of joint vlog venture where we go to different areas in New York City throughout a few different boroughs and just visit locations that have been mentioned in books. So I will be leaving in the description bar down below the link to Bethany's own vlog. These are going up on the same day, so you should be able to watch them basically at the same time, one right after the other. And we went to a lot of really fun places today. We each picked four locations from different books and she chose four different books. And I just decided to go with one book, which was The Changeling by Victor Laval. Now, I haven't actually read this book in a few years, but I've been meaning to revisit it because it left such an impression on me, and I thought it was very clear when I was reading it that Victor Laval loves New York City. There are so many moments in here that he gets very specific talking about areas that the characters are in in the city. And so I thought it would be really fun to show you who may have read this book but haven't been to New York City what some of these places look like. So I'm not really up to doing a full review of this book because again it's been a few years since I've read it. But basically The Changeling is a sort of like dark fairy tale fantasy horror sort of story which are some of my absolute favorites. If you are someone who is familiar with fairy and folk tales, then you probably already know what a changeling is. But changeling lore is usually when a fairy changes out a human baby with a fairy one who is usually sick, and then take the healthy human baby into the fae world. So knowing that going into this story, I think some of the fantastical elements that happen are even more rewarding, and I really enjoyed this book. I really enjoyed Laval's writing. He's also written other horror books, books, but this was the first thing that I read from him. And so it was really fun flipping through and trying to figure out a couple of spots to sort of visit on today's journey. So there are several different places that are mentioned in this book that we're unable to go to. He mentions Ridgewood, Queens. I believe he goes to the Bronx, maybe even Long Island. There are also a couple other smaller islands that aren't really habitable that you can't really get to also mentioned in here but I was able to find four locations that I thought might be interesting to sort of show on camera. All the places I ended up choosing from this book happened to be in Manhattan, and we started at the top of Manhattan in Washington Heights. Apollo Cagua, our main character, visits the Fort Washington branch of the New York Public Library at the beginning of chapter seven on page 24. Apollo hit the library sales less regularly than estate sales or used bookstores, but he'd been in Washington Heights anyway for a fruitless estate sale, so he stopped at the Fort Washington branch of the NYPL. Hi, we are here at the Fort Washington New York Public Library branch, uh, which is one of the locations in The Changeling by Victor Laval. I will be giving you more information by voiceover, but here it is. Also go check out Bethany, beautifully bookish <laughs> Bethany. She's gonna be doing a vlog with me today and she has her own on her own channel, so. See the other locations. Since the main character, Apollo, is a bookseller and sort of finds a lot of like rare and used books, I thought it would be fun and also very fitting to start at a library. The next couple places we visited were in Chinatown, so all the way at the bottom of Manhattan. We traversed a lot of ground today. Apollo goes there in chapter 45. On page 201, it says, The Mayahana Buddhist Temple is one of the most famous sites for tourists to visit in all of Chinatown. Two golden lions guard the red front doors, and inside sits the largest Buddhist statue in all of New York City. Before it became the Mayahana Buddhist Temple, it had been the Rosemary Theater, a place that showed a steady rotation of kung fu movies and porn films. Films. So we're here at the second location, the second location, which is a temple, and it's also in a very busy intersection. Uh, we're right by two of the biggest bridges coming out of Manhattan, uh, so you can probably do that in the background. But there will be video for you to see of the temple. Then we sort of recreated the walk that the characters did, going from the temple to a dumpling place. Feeling silly, they all went out to eat at a spot nearby called Tasty Dumpling on Mulberry Street, the best dumpling spot in Chinatown. A good meal together felt even holier than the temple visit. 
Okay, so we are at the Tasty Dumpling, which is a little dumpling shop, a little restaurant that they eat at in the book as well. Uh, and we are now three out of four of the locations for this book. It's also across from a really cute park. Uh, and people seem to be having a lot of fun here today. <laughs> We didn't end up getting dumplings today, but I have eaten at a couple spots in Chinatown. All of them have been fantastic. And I was super excited to take note of this new spot, especially because it's right outside of a really cute park that seemed to have a really good energy of like people hanging out and playing sports and like a kid's park. And it just seemed like a really good time. Finally, we stayed in downtown Manhattan. We moved a little bit closer to, I'm pretty sure it was the financial district. And we ended up going to a very specific subway stop that Apollo also goes to in this book. I made sure to choose this one especially because this scene in the book was one that really stayed with me. And if you've also read this book, I'm sure you know why. Apollo and his wife take the train at this stop at the end of chapter 13 and the beginning of chapter 14. On page 55, it says, Apollo and Emma reached the bottom of the staircase then pushed through the turnstiles. They didn't have long to wait. The A arrived in record time. They bordered at Chambers Street feeling downright blessed. All right, we're wrapping up my section of the vlog with the Chambers Street <laughs> subway stop. Uh, and we actually are going to be getting on the train here and going to Bethany's final stop. So again, her vlog will be linked down below in the description. Check it out. Um, it was fun doing this today. Yeah, this was fun. Yeah. I had such a good time today going around with Bethany, getting to be outside again, especially as things are slowly starting to open up. It's been nice to just sort of travel my city again in a way that I haven't been able to in the last year. It also super made me want to reread The Changeling. But I believe that is all I have for you today. This video is pretty short and straightforward and just a little fun thing that we decided to do today. Please go watch Bethany's video. And I hope you enjoyed seeing these clips and sort of following our journey as we were following the journey of book characters. I would love to hear any comments you had down below. And if you've read The Changeling, let me know if you pick any other locations. I think this would be a really fun thing to do with some other New York City centered books in the future. So if you have ideas, feel free to also leave those in the comments. Otherwise, that is going to be it for me today. So thank you all so much for watching and I'll be back with another video shortly. Bye.